Hello, it's still Pavlov with you and I still need uh, to balance the average price of uh, review gear on my channel. Of course, I'm kidding, but today we'll be talking about uh, yet another good affordable seg uh, segment model. It's a bit uh, pricier compared to previous review, but it's still really affordable. It's a SimGod EW200 or they call this model Maze and its price is $40. It's a single dynamic driver in air monitors. Uh, of course, he used some complex uh, internal uh, acoustics uh, schema, some good driver with strong um, double magnets and so on. If you're interested in details, you can read it uh, actually here on the box. Uh, dual magnetic circuit and dual cavity SCP diaphragm dynamic in-ear headphones. And also here you can see frequency response chart uh, that is pretty close to that uh, famous H 2016 target. We, we won't name this company. It's a company that should not be named. Anyway, of course, I'm kidding. Everyone knows that company. So what we're getting here for $40. First of all, pretty nice uh, box. It uh, maze is written on the box and uh, you basically getting maze on the box. Of course, links uh, to the official store will be in the description. And inside here is another black cardboard box with company's logo. Actually, SimGod uh, can be proud putting their name on anything because they proved uh, for many years that they can create uh, really good tunings. Then we having earpieces themselves and even out of the box they look uh, pretty impressive for this uh, price. Also let's dig here. Actually, even not dig, let's shake it. So everything is full of different accessories. Here should be tips. No, it's not tips no, or not only tips. It's a storage pouch. Actually, I don't like this material, but we getting it with a lot of affordable models. Three pair of uh, silicon tips and uh, here I suppose we'll get uh, their stock cable. So let's let's look inside and here it is. So in terms of design they of course looks fancy and I can even imagine how uh, problematic it will be for, uh, for me to make some photos. They are not super heavy, but of course they give you that uh, feel of uh, a, a bit uh, weighty metal, because it's all done of metal, mirror polished. Of course this mirror finish gather fingerprints, they are not hard to, uh, uh, hard to wipe, but still keep in mind that it's the model that will gather fingerprints. In general, uh, internal part is ergonomic with all edges smoothed and they fitting nicely into ears. This uh, spout has a bit uh, sharper angle than it should be, but still it provides nice fit and uh, about average sound isolation. Of course there is a lip for holding the tips and protective grill, so all parts uh, we pay attention on to it. In general of course uh, it looks really stylish and about five years ago you have to pay like $100 uh, even for the shells themselves. And uh, taking into account that recently we have a really good uh, step forward in terms of dynamic drivers. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure did you notice that or not, but like a lot of models nowadays offers uh, really good dynamic drivers in, even in the affordable segment. So it all gives us a nice... Uh, uh, rising the bar in the affordable segment. So it's a left earpiece. Uh, so here is the left cable. It's marked by a blue dot, uh, not the pale blue dot one. And uh, fitting nicely and uh, holding really tight. So it will be a bit complex to disconnect it afterwards, but 
I think it will be doable. Stock cable looks really great for this price. Uh, it's uh, it has ear hooks and it looks uh, fancy with this uh, silverish and goldish uh, uh, wires inside of this uh, uh, silicone insulation. So looks uh, really attractive. Feels super comfortable. It's really soft. Pretty big plastic splitter with a chin slider. Really comfortable in wearing with almost zero microphonic effect. And below the cable it goes twisted in spiral. And inside of each wire it also twist, uh, twisted in the spiral. So spirals in the spirals looks uh, pretty good. Goes down to the angled uh, plastic jack. So, as you can see, in terms of exterior, everything is really well done. And of course about the sound, I gave them about 48 hours of burn-in, still I don't know why I'm doing that, uh, there were no big changes in sound, uh, so uh, you can proceed to listening if you decide to buy them. And in terms of sound, it's uh, like uh, really good for this price, like they really uh, fit that uh, target curve uh, from the company we can't name. And uh, that means good, well-balanced sound. Uh, and there are some models in this price range with good and well-balanced sound. But there is one exception that uh, this model has a bit uh, better treble than I've expected. But of course, uh, let's talk about everything step by step. So they have normal bass accent, not uh, bass head level, but at the same time I won't call them like uh, uh, bass lacking or something like that. There is a good accent both on mid and deep bass. But at the same time bass is pretty well controlled, it stays on its place, almost not uh, bleeding onto mids. And what I really like here, deep bass is not trying to dominate. When it's necessary, like for example with some Prodigy tracks that I like to listen sometimes, it will give you nice rumble. Not like uh, crushing your skull, but you'll definitely hear the presence of that uh, deeper layers of bass and but uh, at, the, at the same time when for example some double bass is playing uh, uh, it won't be saturated with that uh, deeper deeper bass that is not present in the harmonics of double bass so uh, instrument will sound like uh, more balanced and more natural uh, speed of uh, low frequencies is pretty good as well as detailization and texturing of course not to be compared with something more expensive but for the this price tire like absolutely zero complaints because uh, you're getting a uh, nice sense of realism and when necessary you're getting pleasant rumble but uh, not base heavy level anyway so and first example it's queen another one by the dust great example of low frequencies by great band they worked in many genres and when they do they created uh, perfect songs so another one bites the dust is almost uh, stellar disco uh, track and uh, it has a nice drum line and really uh, really thick enjoyable bass line and these earphones delivered uh, in a pretty pleasant way and thanks to the good control of low frequencies uh, um, guitars and vocals on mid frequencies remain audible and also enjoyable and uh, mid frequencies is like of course they are assessed compared to the bass and treble but at the same time thanks to the good uh, de uh, detailization they doesn't sound like moved to the background it's more like compensation to our hearing so we hear the best mid frequencies so uh, rising bass and treble just compensate this un unevenness of our uh, hearing and the uh, mid frequencies are sound like uh, good dynamic driver does uh, nice level of detailization but without attempts to go to the micro contrast and uh, highlight uh, tiniest details 
or like it happens in some cases highlight issues with uh, record quality uh, meets have uh, good dynamics meaning nice emotion representation and uh, weight distribution they are not trying to add weight or boost emotions but when they are present in record you'll get them really well and uh, that means good female and male vocal also they have uh, traditional bump in the uh, lower treble upper mids area to make everything more airy and spicy but it's not overdone because they have uh, not the spike but just it goes up and stays on that level so all treble is uh, a bit uh, boosted without any harsh spikes and drops until about 8-9 kilohertz area then they have a drop okay sorry let's go back to mid frequencies imaginary stage is not huge uh, but uh, pretty accurately built it's above average but not by much and you get nice positioning of the instruments depth is also well done if i'd go nitpicking i'd say that i'm lacking a bit of uh, layer separation but at the same time it's more like a matter of preferences but uh, of course still not to be compared with something more expensive so let's have an example and actually it's uh, like uh, i tried to google some information about this band and this album didn't find uh, much but it's uh, uh, it's labeled as Swiss group the heavies and uh, somewhere at early 90s they released heavy uh, mega metal marathon and actually you see that it's like tribute to 80s and 70s so uh, album cover was definitely designed by a designer who was really popular in mid 80s and it's a potpourri of uh, uh, famous uh, metal and rock tracks with vocal and uh, all that uh, stuff actually i'm sure that it it would have been impossible to release it nowadays due to copyright issues because like uh, there are eight tracks on this album all uh, all of them are compilations and each includes like uh, from 10 to 15 different popular songs transitioning from one to each uh, to another if you like i uh, are a fan of 80s and 70s rock and metal it's definitely a great experience for you also this is kind of live album to be honest i'm not sure was it really performed live because it uh, sometimes sounds like they just added uh, that uh, uh, audience uh, clapping and other stuff but i'm not sure maybe it's a live performance indeed it's uh, pretty nicely recorded meaning that you'll have a good uh, level of details and uh, thanks to these headphones uh, guitars and vocals and percussions delivers well and also thanks to the nicely balanced uh, bass you'll get like really good sense of uh, bass uh, kick for the drum set it's pretty enjoyable and definitely increases that sense of uh, live performance and the uh, treble as i've started saying it's like uh, after rising uh, it stays on this level then drops a little bit but it uh, there are also two spikes in the below 10 kilohertz area and that means that treble is boosted but at the same time it doesn't sound uh, too sharp for me of course on tracks that recorded with sibilance you'll get that like iron maiden for example seven sun of a seven sun all that uh, piercing s you'll get there and uh, at the same time uh, i uh, don't found them uh, fatiguing or something like that but it's a matter of your preference it's definitely not the model for those who like warm sound with relaxed treble and thanks to that spikes in the upper 10 kilohertz area they have um, like uh, better than average uh, treble extension pretty surprisingly probably uh, one of the best extensions in this price tire that's what i'm trying to say and that gives them that uh, difference from other models because you're not only getting like a classical v-shaped balance signature but also at the same time you're getting better uh, extended uh, 
travel overtone saturation. Basic overtones are almost great and extended ones are also on a surprisingly good level, meaning you'll get more sense of realism for the instruments. Of course, uh, almost no layering here, it's a prerogative of uh, much more expensive models. But at the same time, you're also getting uh, typical dynamic driver treble, meaning they are not as airy and as sharp as balanced armature ones, and also it plays a role that uh, treble sounds more comfortable, at least to my ears, of course. But uh, you're getting surprisingly good sense of uh, timber richness for the instruments. And uh, example for the treble, it's the Rolling Stones, painted black, like not something superbly recorded, but uh, I like that uh, stereo effect that was used on this track and on many tracks of that time, like uh, drum set goes to the left ear, sitar goes to the right ear, vocal stays in center, and you're getting like two uh, distinct uh, sources of interesting treble from one-handed percussions, uh, actually bit simplified and on the right uh, ear you getting uh, like that uh, interesting sitar over tones and sounds and actually these earphones play it uh, pretty nicely of course lacking layering but uh, better than competitors and rivals in this price range speaking about the sources of course they will benefit from some digital tonal converter it's undoubtedly here and speaking about the compressions like what I recently reviewed. Fio FD1 is uh, more sharper in the treble and less extended, but a bit uh, tighter and impactful on the bass. And Fio FH11, actually they have uh, like a bit more detailed treble, but at the same time it's more spiky, a bit harsher compared to this model. Uh, Tanjim 1 that I reviewed recently, actually they are sounding, uh, they are a bit uh, more affordable and uh, they also lacking this uh, uh, treble extension here. Of course, uh, not for everyone this uh, treble will be a plus, uh, like for some people it can be a drawback, but uh, I really like that this model features that a bit unusual thing and uh, if you're looking for something like classically uh, balanced, uh, but at the same time having a bit of uh, spice on top of that, uh, definitely this uh, Simgot maze is uh, worth uh, paying attention. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a great day.